Memorial Day is tomorrow when we pay tribute to the men and women who made the ultimate sacrifice in defense of our country. And with us today is the Commissioner of Veterans Affairs, fairly new Commissioner, Thomas Sadi. And Commissioner Sadi, good to see you here on the program. Thank you so much for having me, Dennis. And you're a veteran yourself, right? I'm currently still serving in the Reserve 14 years uh, with a Civil Affairs Reserve Battalion here in Connecticut. So it's possible you could be called up for a deployment? It's, it's possible. Anyone who's currently in uh, Reserve or National Guard could be called up for a mobilization deployment. How many veterans do we have in our state? Approximately 185,000 veterans wow. currently in the state of Connecticut. So for a small state, we do have a very large veterans population. Is there any way to know how many World War II veterans we have still with us? No, I don't know offhand, but what I can tell you is that it's unfortunately because of the, their it's age, dwindling. we are losing them at a very rapid rate, not only in Connecticut, but around the country. Uh, but, um, you know, we do have World War II veterans at our health care center here in, Ro in Rocky Hill. And, um, you know, there are many still around the state of Connecticut that participate very actively in veterans organizations and ceremonies. What are your goals with the department? You know, really modernization and upgrading, you know, to maintain that which we've done right for many years. And the Department of Veterans Affairs in Rocky Hill and our satellite offices do an amazing job. The DVA team is wonderful in supporting our veterans. But to um, continue to build on that, upgrading our health care facility to provide skilled nursing care. That's our current project now. It will allow us to serve more veterans, uh, I think, better. Uh, upgrading our residential facility for both individual veterans as well as our family housing here in Rocky Hill for veterans at risk of homelessness or who are homelessness, and also uh, the current projects at our cemetery. We are expanding our cemetery as well as improving an appearance improvement grant to realign and clean all the headstones. So just as we care for our veterans and their family members during their life, we must care for them, memorialize them properly when they pass. Has the number of veterans been growing over the years, the demand increasing at these health care centers? The actual, the number of veterans in our state is actually declining uh, over the years, but there is increased need as those veterans from the Korean War, Vietnam War are aging. We have veterans who are aging in place that require additional health care. We're working with our federal partners to provide that care if possible in their homes, and then if not, to provide the care here in Rocky Hill or at our federal um, assets in Newington and West Haven. So the need is increasing increasing, even though I think the number of veterans over the past several years has been decreasing. As you talk about modernization, what specifically do you want to modernize? Well, in our residential facility, for the first time, we hope to, within the next two months, unveil a new uh, updated wing that now will have semi-private rooms rather than the currently four veterans in a, in a common living area. And so to do that, we are upgrading and utilizing a lot of our um, community-based partnership. Volunteers and donors are assisting us with that. In our health care center, the transition to a skilled nursing facility will allow us to serve a larger number of veterans, those veterans who are aging, whether in place in our residential facility or in the community, with a uh, state-of-the-art skilled nursing facility. We are adding some additional staff, and this transition will allow us to serve more veterans, uh, I think, with a better quality of long-term health care. What is the biggest issue facing veterans today? You know, I often say that it, there's not a lack necessarily of programs and services. What it is is connecting those veterans in need with the programs and services that are available. I think one of the greatest issues is identifying those veterans who are in need. They are a proud group of individuals, and rightfully so, and oftentimes may not reach out themselves. So family members, friends and coworkers, if they see a veteran in crisis or just one in need, reach out to them, refer them to services that are there. You know, and there are vet centers around the state, six of them, where veterans can go and just meet with discussion groups or individuals uh, without having to register with the federal VA. So connecting our veterans, making sure they know the programs and services are available for them and they can reach out to us directly at the DVA. And just a few years ago, the state announced that it had wiped out homelessness among veterans. Is that still the case? It is, but that doesn't mean there, are no, there isn't homeless veterans. What it means is that we have the capacity to provide them with housing, with transitional housing, with support services. We do that at the Department of Veterans Affairs in Rocky Hill and with, in partnership with many community-based organizations around the state. So while there are homeless veterans, and there will be, sadly, there, we have the ability to provide housing, to provide transitional residential units to them. We just need to make sure they're connecting with the programs and services that we have available. Any commissioner you talk to will say, sure, we could always use more money for our department. How is the budgeting for Veterans Affairs right now in our state? 
we have a solid budget that the governor proposed and uh, we, we can deliver our programs and services within the budget that is currently before the legislature. We could always, and many agencies could always use more money, but we also supplement that with an enormous amount of volunteer hours. Just yesterday, more than 560 volunteer hours were committed by over 50 volunteers from the community to beautify the Department of Veterans Affairs, our residential facility, they did work, they painted, they mulched, they mowed, they helped with filing, and they met with veterans. And so it's not just the work being done, it's that emotional connection that helps to build morale. So our community-based partners with local nonprofits and veteran service organizations help us to deliver our programs and services. Vietnam veterans have often said that they were sort of forgotten. They didn't get the heroic, triumphant return, welcome when they you know, came back from war. Is, is that changing at all, the attitude toward Vietnam veterans? You know, it is a terrible stain on this country the way we treated our Vietnam veterans when they returned home. And I met with several of them last evening in Waterbury at a very large event. And I mentioned them specifically. And several came up to me and said, you know, Commissioner, thank you. Thank you for your thanks for what we did. Because when we came home, we had to hang up our uniforms. We didn't want to let people know we'd served because of the unjust insults and attacks that they had to suffer through. But their going through that has made us, I believe, a better nation because our current generation of veterans now don't have to deal with that. And it's sad that that occurred, but now I don't believe that this nation will ever forget the service of our veterans and that we continue to welcome home our Vietnam veterans and thank them for their service and tell them not to be ashamed. They serve their country patriotically and we welcome them with open arms and are here for them. And tomorrow's the day to remember those who did not come home. Commissioner Tomasati of the Department of Veterans Affairs, we thank you for being here in the program today. Thank you very much and thank you for honoring veterans. Enjoy your Sunday, everybody. Our next news is tonight at 6.30. I'll see you tomorrow.